and at 10, Dave Miller. In the novels, Afton is described as being overweight around the time that the actual serial killings occur, but he eventually lost the weight while in his Dave Miller persona, which comes from the FNAF novels, particularly in The Silver Eyes. As Dave William is stated to be tall and was described as being sallow and thin, with his skin sagging in appearance. His face was poorly shaven and his eyes looked unfocused and sunken, I relate. His security guard uniform doesn't seem to fit him properly and the uniform was grubby and torn in places. With his name tag hung askew on his chest, the scar on his neck was also ugly and curved, almost like a perfect half moon. And the same scar appeared on the other side of his neck. In the graphic novels, Dave is depicted as having brown messy hair and grey eyes. He wears a security uniform, his shirt is white and his black tie and his black pants. And due to the spring lock failure incident, there are endoskeleton arm marks on him where his arms are. Yeah, you know, that's also where how he got the two scars on the back of his neck, the spring lock. In at 9, Vanny. Vanny is possessed by Glitchtrap, a reincarnation of William Afton and appears as the main antagonist of FNAF Security Breach. It's also revealed in the Princess Quest minigames that she was the main protagonist of FNAF Help Wanted, the character that we play as, where she actually ended up first getting corrupted by Glitchtrap when we beat the game. She also plays a role in FNAF AR Special Delivery, but that's beside the point, really. Vanny wears a white bunny costume that has stitching all over it with a large pink tartan stitch on her left hip. Vanny is shown to be murderous and evil as she attempts to trick her target Gregory into falling into a trap by pretending to be nice and well-meaning as Vanessa. She seems to cower in fear of her master Glitchtrap as shown in scrap dialogue, but she also quivers when she's actually talking about him. She's also uncertain, based on her voice, when being confronted about her task implying that she was first hesitant to kill people. However, by the time the security breaches come around, she's either already killed nine children at the Pizzaplex, as seen in a newspaper article, although they could have also just been captured, or it's just that Glitchtrap has more control. And while she wasn't around much in the game, technically being possessed by Glitchtrap makes her a version of William, so suck it, haters. And it ate Scrap Trap. William returned once again in FNAF Pizzeria Simulator with a new design, this time dubbed Scrap Trap. While he does retain some key physical details from Springtrap's design though, there are some major differences. Unlike his previous design where his interior was mostly machinery, now it seems to be almost entirely organic. And it shows his human skeleton as well as his old flesh with five bony fingers on his right hand. And the reason as to why William is so much more detailed this time, probably because more of his body can actually be seen. And you can actually see his full body in like the alley in one of the boot screens. There are way more torn patches in his suit this time with multiple metal wires and exposed and other bits and he lost his forearm for some reason. Half of his ear is gone, like the last version. And the rest of his right ear is gone. Uh, his feet now have fabric over them with three large toes. His eyes no longer glow and now they look completely metallic. The mask also has some significant differences with much larger eye sockets, a black nose, a square muzzle, a singular pair of buck teeth, and a row of at the top with like small sharp needle teeth at the bottom too. As well as just being differently proportioned, which begs the question, how the hell did this happen? Artistic license is, is the actual- And it's seven aggressive Bunzo Bunny. Bunzo Bunny is a toy produced by Playtype Co, which debuted in Chapter 2. He is the main antagonist of the musical memory minigame. Toy versions of Bunzo will also later on be seen near the water treatment facility in this chapter. Bunzo Bunny is an anthropomorphic yellow rabbit with black eyes, which is already triggering me because we all know why. Two large buck teeth and long yellow ears. Luckily, he has both of them. He is often depicted with a wide grin. He also has on a green party hat and matching overalls with suspenders and buttons of the same color. In his aggressive form, though, he retains largely the same appearance. However, one notable difference is that he now has a row of jagged fangs lining his mouth, which is also split further and just wide open, which is absolutely terrifying. Like this organic toy somehow has razor sharp wisdom teeth that can grow on command every time he gets a little angry. That's like some mutant X-Men ability there. Like what the hell? That's terrifying. And it only gets worse from here. And it's six purple guy. William Afton is depicted as the purple guy in FNAF 2, a mysterious purple figure in the FNAF series. In the Take Cake minigame, he is depicted driving up outside of the pizzeria and then killing Charlotte outside of the restaurant. Finally, then he lures five children into the back room using cake, and then seen in the Foxy Go 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 minigame, he killed them too. Those are the ones that presumably go on to possess Freddy, Chica, Bonnie, Foxy, and Golden Freddy. The puppet would then give them life in the animatronic suits to save their souls, possibly. Again, we don't know. It's FNAF. I don't know. The wiki is saying a lot of things like it's confirmed, but it's really not. But it is unconfirmed whether William or the puppet actually put the kids in the suits. In the second game, he is implied to be the night guard before Jeremy Fitzgerald, and then after surviving a week on the shift, he was up to day shift because he complained about the conditions of his workplace. And he threatened to unionize. Ah, yeah, that's, oh, 
get the employers sweating. Then he went on to kill five more kids. This version is mostly scary because I remember the lore of trying to figure out who he was. And this series came out when I was in the 10th grade. Alright, that's like when I was 14. Since I was born in September and this was released in like the summer. Okay, Purple Guy was created after I was 15. It has been more than five years since Purple Guy has been a thing and I've been suffering ever since. Halfway through into number five, Nightmare Fredbear. One theory that I've seen plenty of times and I'm pretty sure was mostly at like a start of the FNAF 4 theory was that Golden Freddy and Fredbear are the same animatronic. Suggesting the reason Golden Freddy is limp in the original FNAF and FNAF 2 are because his endoskeleton was removed after Crying Child's Bite in 1983. And that's why the suit has to teleport around and cause hallucinations because it can't physically move. This would also probably mean that Crying Child was supposed to be in the Golden Freddy suit. However, we know that this isn't true based on the characters being separate in Ultimate Custom Night and just the coloring and the size. Since Golden Freddy is much smaller than Fredbear would be, since Fredbear would have to accommodate the human, whereas Golden Freddy wouldn't, since he would just be an animatronic and not a Springlock suit. But if it is true, it allows for Nightmare Fredbear to be a version of Golden Freddy and thus be on this list. So, for this video and this video only, I will consider this true. And in for Clown Springtrap. Clown Springtrap is Springtrap's third skin and the third skin to be introduced in the Dark Circus event for FNAF AR. Clown Springtrap has a pale white suit and blue and purple makeup above his eyes. He has messy purple hair coming out of his head. And he also has large red lipstick, because why not? He's a clown. Clown Springtrap's body is mostly covered by a large suit with ripped up black pants and a black shirt, along with a red and purple vest. He features large red clown shoes, along with a large red bow tie and flower on his chest. And his right eyelid has also been stitched up for whatever reason. Finally, he carries around a very large red mallet in his left hand. And considering how clowns are one of the most common fears in the world, I think putting Clown Springtrap on this list is definitely justified, especially when he's intentionally jump scaring you in your own home. Even if it's on your phone, okay? The dude is menacing. He has a hammer. It's like Harley Quinn, but not as cute. And he's also basically meant to be a reference to John Wayne Gacy. At least, in my head, that's how I understand it. So, yeah. Getting close to the end in number three, Black Light Bonnie. And the reason I have it is because I need to inspect hotel rooms. No, not really. It was because of a Halloween party. Because black lights make things seem scarier. I don't know why, but they do. Now, having a whole animatronic surrounding this concept is just going to be terrifying, especially when their main color is pink. The black light animatronics were at first just released in toys as promotion for Help Wanted, but they do actually technically make an appearance. The only reason we know they exist, however, is because of the toys. The black lights make their debut in the animatronic repair hard mode, which is basically just the same thing but with hardly any light, so we don't actually see that they're black light, but apparently they are truly the black lights. But either way, Bright, eccentrically colored animatronics will scare anyone who lives in the dark and is scared of adding color to their wardrobe, like my sister. Only she will understand that joke because she dresses like a bat on the regular. Or no, she doesn't dress like a bat, she dresses like she wants to be a bat. Either way, okay, it's a long story, alright, and I don't really want to tell it, but it's still weird. Especially if you're, like, cor- cor- what, what was the phobia of colors? If you're chromophobic? If you're chromophobic, black lights are even worse, so... There you go. But ultimately, in a number two, Spring Trap Rule. One of the most terrifying things that, while not really has happened to anyone in any of the games is the sheer amount of famous internet rule images and videos that there are for these characters. Like, I get it if it's Chica, okay? But like, the worst thing that I think, at least for the terrifying scale, is Springtrap Rule 34 Art. The rule basically being that for anything you can find on the internet, there will be some adult version of that content. Unfortunately, FNAF and even Springtrap are not immune to this rule. Uh, <laughs> but just think about this for a second, alright? Just really think. Most people consider William Afton to be dead, even if he's not actually dead. Which means that most people who look these things up are looking at a dead serial killer's rotting corpse stuck inside an animatronic that has shoved every inch of him with metal and want him to shove it into other things. And then think, yeah, damn. That's sexy. I've had people DM me these form of spring trap images before and they have been instantly blocked. Like, dude, what? He's literally a man who should be dead but is being kept alive by the spirit of one of his victims, those victims being kids, and then you wanna see him lubing up Troll Tower? Dude, this is the reason God is dead. 
Specifically this. Nothing else, just spring trap rule 34. Finally, in at number one, burn trap. William appears as the optional yet canon final boss of FNAF Security Breach, named as burn trap according to his game files. He only appears in the Afton ending, and this form is a result of Vanny downloading William's soul or code brain from the digital realm into a hybrid of animatronics. I don't even f no. Burn Trap's new rotten form appears to be his old one, like a modified, tattered, greenish brown spring bonnie suit, but even more severely withered because he's been through three fires, and his entire lower jaw is finally ripped out, revealing the skull covered in blood, which for some reason is still there. His suit is missing fur, with the exception of his chest, hips, left foot, upper leg, which were all burned away, revealing more of his corpse and his charred remains. His old endoskeleton has been replaced with some of the endoskeletons from other animatronics, maybe even glam rock animatronics for his hands. He's made taller, and he has claws. God, just why? And 10, Kissy Missy. Kissy Missy is a toy produced by Playtime Co. and was created in 1985, one year after Huggy Wuggy's release. Her only appearances so far being in the form of posters in Chapter 1, A Tight Squeeze, and in Chapter 2, Fly in a Web as a minor character. But she is basically just an alternate version of Huggy. According to Playtime Co., Kissy Missy is more than just Huggy Wuggy's better half. She is a beacon of Playtime Co. policies and won't hold back on letting the people know about it. Listen up and pucker up for this fuzzy pink lady. And while she may be helpful, she's still terrifying. Her being helpful though is why she's on the top of the list. But either way, she's basically a pink huggy wuggy. Making it enough for this list in my eyes. I mean like, there's only so many people that I can put on here right now. In a 9 PJ Purple Pillar. PJ Pug Pillar is a swampable toy produced by Playtime Co. Which debuted in Chapter 2 Fly in a Web and is the main antagonist of the Statues game. Alright, he resides in the Statues game where the player must play a game of statues while trying to get to the end of an obstacle course and avoiding being caught by PJ Pugapillar. But, in the Chapter 2 trailer, which is presumed to be his original design, it appears to be a giant purple centipede toy with black eyes and seemingly blue and red antenna, along with a red nose and human-like teeth. And you know what? That's what I'm calling the PJ Purple Pillar. I remember making a comment about this guy when I was originally talking about the Chapter 2 trailer and how terrifying he looked. And honestly, he looks better and less terrifying now. And I, I mean, like, the crawling is certainly horrifying to say the least, but the purple version is so much creepier and more awkward that, yeah, it would have been worse. Plus, I love pugs, so. In a date, Furious Mommy Long Legs. Mommy Long Legs, otherwise referred to as Experiment 1222 or Mary Pine, which is her real name listed on the transfer request, is a toy produced by Playtime Co. who debuted in Chapter 2 as its main antagonist. Mommy Long Legs is a large, slender creature bearing an uncanny resemblance to a spider, luckily though with only four limbs, so it doesn't trigger my arachnophobia. But these four limbs are also all extremely elastic, capable of stretching quote hundreds of feet according to her transfer request. And while her basic form isn't really all that terrifying, her furious form is where things really start to get freaky. The image on the wiki firstly is of her doing like a Spider-Man landing pose, which I think is all kinds of wrong. Just like this, which is freaking weird. <laughs> But, also in her furious form, Mommy takes on a deranged and annoyed appearance. Her entire body becomes withered and covered in grime, her face is twisted into a permanent frown, while her mouth has become more of a scowling grimace. And it's 7, Glitchtrap. Glitchtrap is the digital manifestation of William Apton that first appears in Help Wanted. Glitchtrap takes on the form of a man wearing a cartoonish Spring Bunny costume, based on Spring Bunny's original design from a poster advertising Fredbear's Family Diner. He also wears a purple star speckled vest, a purple bow tie, and two black buttons around the top of his chest like he's wearing a suit even though it's literally just fur. He also has stitches across his hands and across like the rest of his body because the suit is supposed to be sewn together because it's all fabric and not an animatronic. And he also has vivid purple eyes which is the tiniest little pupil and it's terrifying. Which are the first thing visible when he actually starts to appear to the player's right. In black light mode his eyes will actually turn blue with white circular pupils and he has very large whiskers on the side of his face. You know, three eyelashes for some reason on his eyes and large arch eyebrows, making him just as surprised as I am. While he is unable to jump scare or really hurt you in the game, that does make him less scary, but he is certainly creepy and definitely scarier than Scraptrap. And it's 6, Damaged Toy Bunzo. 
Buns Wax is the main antagonist for Musical Memory in which he will lower towards the player as they play the game. If the player gets continuous errors in the game's pattern sequence or fails to play the game quickly enough, within the time limit of Bunzo's descent, he will reach them, jump scaring them, and killing them. He seemingly delights in eating the player if they fail the game, screaming and crashing his cymbals with a deafening din before doing so. After beating the minigame, however, a few minutes after the player leaves the minigame area, faint thrashing noises as well as some crashing from Bunzo's cymbals can be heard. This implies Mommy Longlegs kills Bunzo for failing to kill the player in his minigame. If the player returns to the game station near the end of the game, Bunzo's corpse can actually be spotted on the ceiling, hanging motionless and trapped by Mommy's webs. The cable attached to Bunzo's back that was used for his ascent and descent in musical memory is also nowhere to be seen, but either way, this version looks terrifying, despite later on being dead. Halfway through in a number 5, Jack O'Bonny. Jack O'Bonny is one damn wascally wabbit. The animatronic is like your typical Bonnie, however, is missing flesh in all the right places, and that, that's not, like, actually meant to sound like that, okay? I don't, I don't know if I should even be calling it flesh. Like, it's not flesh, but it's their version of flesh, you know? Like, to him it's flesh, but like, does that make it okay to call it flesh? Whatever, I'm just, I'm gonna call it flesh. He glows orange from the inside, and he glows hard, like, harder than the chorus of All Star. This animatronic is scary, and one of the most intimidating animatronics in the entire series. The only reason it's not higher on the list is because he's not very present within, this game, within the games, okay? It makes an appearance in FNAF 4's Halloween update, and then in FNAF FNAF VR's healthy sections of the Pirate Cove ride in Curse of Dreadbear, but other than that, we don't really see him. And when they are in the game, they're not really that intimidating. But that's because I'm really in control of the outcome, and if I get jump scared, it's my fault and not the fault of some weird game mechanic, like the doors not working how they should. Yeah, that's right. I'm still mad about that. I will always be mad about that. And at four, damaged PJ Pugapillar. PJ Pugapillar will follow the player during the statue's game, moving regardless of whether the lights are on or off. If he reaches the player, he will kill them, resetting the game. This will also happen if the player walks or uses their grab pack while the lights are on, so it's best just to stay still when the lights are on and so, you know, you don't get killed. He is a long creature that is the combination of a pug and a caterpillar. He has several blue and purple segments on his body that are fluffy in appearance, and his eyes also have large black pupils. And while his purple form is creepy, his damaged form is terrifying. Available to see on the wiki, like all of these, damaged PJ is one of the most horrifically cursed things that I have ever seen. With no eyes and blood covering him, this makes me want to hug my dog and give him as much food as he ever could want, which, mind you, is normally the entire bag. Getting close to the end in number three, Golden Call. Golden Call is more or less like Springtrap design-wise. He's a Springlock suit with a corpse inside of him and has become a dull green due to his color rotting away because, you know, there's a corpse inside of him. Half of Golden Call's left ear is bent, causing it to stick out at an angle. His other ear is still intact. Luckily, I guess, I don't really know if that's a good thing, other than small withering on, like, the sides of it. His black top hat also has some withering on it, mainly towards the base and sides. He has one small hole right above his eye socket from withering, and his holes appear to be connected to his eye sockets, meaning that his eyes are slightly bigger than normal. On the left side of his head, there is a large hole from withering. He has a bit more withering on the sides of his head, too. So on the right side of his head, he has a, like, a red substance that is sticking and also sticking to like the phone that he's holding, hence why he's named Golden Call, because he's calling someone. But this substance is most likely blood or flesh or something similar. Golden Call also has a set of endoskeleton eyes in his head that have red pupils, but the eyes of his corpse are also hanging out of the eye sockets and appear to be blue. He has a bit of withering on his snout, his lower jaw, and the edges of his lower jaw, and then he has, like, organs inside of him, but, like, I don't know what organs these are. His entire torso is also heavily worn, and his pelvis has a single hole in the front that reveals to be, like, some form of blood vessel or muscle, and I don't even want to know what was there originally. But ultimately, in a number two, Mini Huggies. The Mini Huggies are toys that were produced by Playtime Co. specifically for the Wacka Wuggy minigame. They are mini versions of Huggy Wuggy, and I guess you can see why they're on this list. The Mini Huggies are long-legged furry entities that come in a variety of fur colors, such as green, red, blue, and yellow. Potentially more, however, that would imply that they were mating to make new colors, at least if you have a messed up brain like I do. But even if there are other colors, we haven't seen them. The Mini Huggies make an appearance during the Wacka Wuggy minigame, 
game, and this is the only time that they can actually attack the player. There are 18 holes in the wall during this game, and when it starts, the player will hear them crawling to make their way towards the player through these holes. The player must whack them with the grab pack in order to make them retreat. A few minutes after the player leaves the area, faint noises of clanking sounds and screams of the many huggies can be heard, where they are killed by Mommy Longlegs for not succeeding to kill the player. However, it seems like PJ Pugapillar is the only toy to actually escape Mommy's wrath after failing for some reason. And finally, in at number one, Daddy Long Legs. Daddy Long Legs is a toy made by Playtime Co, who also debuted on a poster in Chapter 2, uh, alongside the baby Long Legs. Not much is known about him other than the fact that he comes with the Mommy Long Legs and Family set, with Mommy Long Legs and Baby Long Legs, um, but and he would, that he was most likely created because of the success of Mommy, and he also um, helps to explain Baby Long Legs. You see, when a mommy and daddy long legs love each other very much, daddy long legs appears in a poster after the player escapes from PJ Pugapillar, and he is a blue stretchy spider with a dark blue mustache and magenta eyes. He wears a yellow bow tie and yellow buttons, as well as a gray fedora. But honestly, this is giving me like Chris Hansen conversation needing vibes if you catch what I'm saying, okay? Definitely a sussy boy over here, and not for the fun or logical reasons either, okay? Dude's a creep. The fedora confirms it. And attend Phantom Freddy. The Phantom animatronics are hallucinational variants of the original animatronics who haunt Fazbear's Fright throughout the nights in FNAF 3. The Freddy Files book also seems to point out that these hallucinations appear burnt, suggesting that they're trying to warn you of what's to come. The Phantom animatronics first appeared in FNAF 3 as side antagonists. Some of them returned in Ultimate Custom Night, but they all came back in Help Wanted. However, I know Know what you're thinking. Connor, isn't Phantom Freddy a version of normal Freddy, not Golden Freddy? And while at surface level you could be correct, there's actually proof against this. Phantom Freddy's model resembles Golden Freddy's appearance in the second game due to the missing ear and the wires coming from the eyes, and even the way his hat is slightly tilted to the left. This has led many people to believe that the Phantom represents Golden Freddy instead, and after brightening his jump scare you can see that Phantom Freddy is actually Golden Freddy. This also is further shown in the code as his events are listed under Golden Freddy. In at 9, Withered Golden Freddy. Withered Golden Freddy is an antagonist in FNAF 2. Golden Freddy is an animatronic bear and children's entertainer host housed at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza along with the original versions of Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy before they get scrapped in favor of the toy animatronics. Withered Golden Freddy's appearance has not really changed much, but he does look more damaged than he did in the first game. Cause you know, he's missing one ear and it has a few wires coming out of his eye socket. His head also appears to be tilting to the left instead of to the right like it did in FNAF 1, but I mean, that's inconsequential. And in Ultimate Custom Night, after he appears when lowering your tablet, you gotta put it back up quickly to get rid of him, because staring at him for too long will end your run with an unpleasant surprise. That unpleasant surprise being death. In a date, Psychic Friend Fredbear. He's here, he's there, he's everywhere. Who are you gonna call? Psychic Friend Fredbear. Fredbear Plush is a plush of the Fredbear animatronic owned by the Bite Victim aka Crying Child. He first appeared in FNAF 4 and he doesn't really do anything, but and he will stay on your desk and switch the currently viewed camera every few seconds seemingly in sister location using his remote. Clicking his nose enough to will prevent prevent him from switching the camera though, meaning that you gotta love him. However, the real issue that makes him scary is his jump scare. Despite him being labeled as harmless, mess with his bigger version and he is far from it. In Ultimate Custom Night, you are able to get an item called the Death Coin that allows you to eliminate any animatronic from the game. This works with most animatronics. It removes them from play and you won't have to deal with them for the rest of the playthrough or I guess technically life. But there is at least, to my knowledge, one animatronic this coin does not work on, Golden Freddy. If used on Golden Freddy, the Golden Fredbear plush, also known as Psychic Friend Fredbear, will jump scare you immediately, which is incredibly rude. And it's 7 Glitch Trap. Glitch Trap is the sentient code version of Bonnie from the VR game FNAF Help Wanted, where he serves as the main antagonist of the game and the reincarnation of William Afton after his soul latched onto a circuit board or hard drive containing usable code. He manifests in game and is somehow able to control certain aspects. He is somehow able to interact with the endings of the game, being the one to stuff us into the Freddy suit. It's weird, he wasn't supposed to be in the game, so why does he have such an important role in the end of the game? Maybe he just made a different version of Glitch Trap, like the 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 suit is just like it was a character in the game, but he made a separate version, so he kind of like copied and pasted it and then possessed that one. Maybe when he starts dancing after he kills us and stuffs us in the suit again, that's that that is cringe. That's worse than my dancing, and that's saying a lot. Glitch Trap is also supposed to be reminiscent of the first suit that William Afton used to kill. The stitch marks on the suit, um, like on the joints, indicate that. And he's 
really off-putting, okay? Knowing that this is the first instance that William kills someone just really sets me on edge. It's scary in another kind of way, the kind of way that sticks with you long after you've closed the game, especially when we just saw him lure us into a dark room behind a curtain. Um, yeah. And you know what, for all the, if you want to complain, screw you, it's still a version of Bonnie. And at six, Golden Glamrock Freddy. Golden Glamrock Freddy is not a real character, but despite this, there are plenty of fan-made versions of Golden Glamrock Freddy, especially given his absence in this game along with the various golden references, like the golden statue, the golden plushie, etc. Whether they just be coloring him in, changing the palette, or making him pure metal, Golden Glamrocks are all over the place on Google and other sites like DeviantArt, but don't go too deep otherwise, you'll end up like me, constantly having nightmares of animatronics doing unsightly things, but at least it's a nightmare. But given the theory in Doctor Strange, if I'm having nightmares of being forced to watch animatronic coitus parties, a version of me technically actually has to suffer through that, which is a horrifying thought. I wonder if anyone ever dreams through my eyes, like any other version of me dreams through my eyes and then wakes up thinking that it was a nightmare. Halfway through in a number five, Springtrap. Springtrap is William's first physical incarnation, yet still is most iconic, appearing as a weak yet still living William Afton, sealed inside the heavily damaged golden body. Bonnie Springlock suit. This first version appeared in FNAF 3 and he had a very drab olive color with darker colors on his stomach and the inside of his ears because you know it's how they shade bunnies. And a great portion of his right ear was missing. His right, not his left, sorry about that. With a single red wire sticking out of the stump. Springtrap's entire body was torn and tattered with gaping holes bearing exposed wires and casing throughout, making him appear much more caber looking than any of the other animatronics from the previous installments, although the nightmares would then take this and then up it to an 11. His green or brown and black nose had an irregular squarish shape due to deterioration, assumingly, with both of Springtrap's hands and feet being attached and generally intact. His legs are entirely stripped from the mid-shin down, fully exposing the endoskeleton wiring, the metal, and also his tendons that would have made up this section of William, at least if he wasn't trapped in the animatronic suit and had a lot of his leg taken up by robot bits. Now keep in mind that Afton is still alive at this point since the one you should not have killed was keeping him alive so that he could continue to suffer. So honestly, that seems pretty terrifying. And it for Sinister Golden Freddy. Sinister Golden Freddy was originally intended on releasing with the cancelled Sinister Turmoil fan game. Instead of the full game, however, we ended up getting Sinister Turmoil Sewers, which is a small section of what would have been the full game. Sinister Golden Freddy is a golden animatronic bear with a lighter shade of gold on his stomach, snout, and inside his ears. Small but very sharp teeth and no eyes. His whole suit appears to be severely withered, having large rips and tears all over the place. Like, just Christ, he really needs to like go to a tailor and get those fixed up. But Sinister Golden Freddy sports large needle-like weapons on his wrist as well, much like normal Sinister Freddy, and also appears to have small geometrically shaped claws and nails. Sinister Golden Freddy also has a mouth with sharp but small teeth. That's the reason he's terrifying, okay? I don't like it. It's absolutely terrifying terrifying and deserves to be number one, even order over Dormitibus animatronics, but those are just an easy number one and I'm not trying to torture myself anymore. Getting close to the end, and in number three, Deranged Mommy Long Legs. Deranged Mommy Long Legs is honestly just unsettling. In the beginning of chapter two, Mommy Long Legs presented herself with a warm and welcoming front to lure the player into participating in her games. This facade, however, quickly diminished as she threatens the player with death and the possibility of having their innards consumed by her while they're still alive. In her deranged form, Mommy's general appearance remains almost identical to her furious state. However, her eyes are now completely dilated, giving off a crazy, unhinged vibe. It's like the overly attached girlfriend, but Mommy Long Legs. Her irises have also faded into a pale artichoke color and she will no longer blink. Her hair is now twisted and mangled, no longer in the neat curls from her previous two forms. Her hands are also enlarged maniacally and her fingers are splayed and elongated to resemble claws. Her body is also twisted in even more alarming and unnatural ways throughout her final chase and during her death scene, blood can be seen splattering out of mommy as she is crushed by the grinder. This confirms that she is an organic creature. Um, and like Huggy Wuggy was from in the previous chapter. But either way, that's damn terrifying. And ultimately, in a number two, Great Escape Golden Freddy. Golden Freddy returns as an enemy in FNAF AR Special Delivery and as a playable character in Freddy in Space 2. But Great Escape Golden Freddy, or for short, simply Great Escape Freddy, is the first skin Golden Freddy has gotten in FNAF AR. He received this skin as a part of the special mixed reality DLC game mode, Dark Circus Encore, that released in December 13th, 2021. He's available exclusively through purchasing and beating the DLC content. Great Escape Golden Freddy is identical to Golden Freddy in colorations, 
still being yellow, but is now a much duller shade, with black and green splotches on his head, legs, and feet. His head is severely withered in multiple areas, with most of it deteriorated or missing, including half of his top hat. His eye sockets are also completely empty, the holes going through the endoskeleton head, and a chain is running through his mouth. He wears a brown straight jacket and multiple golden chains running around it, like a G. With many locks, boxes, and giant metallic collars around his neck, these chains also run down his upper legs, and he looks like he's, he's like dangling from them. It's genuinely one of, if not the scariest skin in FNAF AR, and it's a mobile game, so it takes a lot of time to actually make it scary, but this does it. Good job. And finally, in a number one, am I real? Am I Real has two different forms. His first form is Cake Bear. Cake Bear's design originated from the Save Him minigame, where Freddy delivers cake to children. However, Am I Real's second form, Am I Real, is a form that much resembles Springtrap, and it also appears to be some form of Golden Freddy animatronic. This form is mostly comprised of a drab green like Springtrap, and similarly has exposed human remains inside. His right eye socket has gotten larger on the side of his head, and there's a big hole that can be seen on the right side of his head because of course there is. If you want to make an animatronic scary, you just take bits away. His top hat has received some withering on it as well, his lower jaw is slanted and worn down, no longer circular like Cake Bear's, and he has a sizable hole in the right side of his torso too, revealing his organs. Rips and tears cover his arms, revealing even more human remains, and he's just disgusting. He's meant to be a springlock suit, but at the time that this game was released, we didn't have Fredbear as a character, meaning that this is definitely intended to be a Golden Freddy. And at 10, RWQFSFASXC. Shadow Bonnie makes an appearance in FNAF 2, but is more so a main character in FNAF 3, where the character makes an ultimate appearance as a glitched out minigame character, and a statue that you need to click on to enable the glitched minigame. It, it, it's weird. Shadow Bonnie has also made an appearance in the FNAF AR game. This character has been all over, and WRQFSFASXC is just a pitch black version of Bonnie with glowing eyes and teeth. That's pretty much it, and it's pretty weird when you think about it. And maybe this is behind, this is like the concept behind the red jump scare in FNAF VR. That, that could just be Shadow Bonnie, although I can't be quite sure. No matter, being just a void of pitch black energy can make any animatronic scary, and honestly we don't know how Shadow RWQFF whatever it is came into being. There are some theories about it, that it was someone who got spring locked in the suit before Afton, or that someone else got killed, but we don't know for sure, and that's what makes it even scarier. In at 9, Withered Bonnie. The original Withered Animatronic. Withered Bonnie also hails from FNAF 2, where the original five were broken and dismantled. Withered Bonnie is the original Nightmare Animatronic. Missing a face and only having two red dots for eyes, this would give any of us nightmares when we first saw it enter our office. Withered Bonnie has multiple rows of teeth, which is confusing to me, because why would an animatronic that's meant to be an entertainer in a children's pizzeria need more than one row of teeth? But I mean, after the FNAF 4 bite, I think we all know that Afton just built these to kill. Withered Bonnie is pretty spooky, but considering how it's like the second one on this list, things only get worse from here. Okay, I can't really put it anywhere like higher or I guess lower on the list, depending on how you think about it, but like, especially when there's even scarier ones, and one of those is from FNAF World. And it ate White Rabbit. The White Rabbit is a version of Bonnie first appearing in FNAF World, and I think that's enough, okay? The fact that it was in FNAF World makes it scary. And while this game is probably the least respected and most hated in the series, my god is this White Rabbit thing terrifying. This is like a miniature version of Bonnie. Uh, that's not that bad, right? Well, this thing is completely white and has sunken black eyes with no pupils. Yeah, that makes this thing look freaking terrifying. I don't care that you're going to go to the comments and complain that this character is on here, okay? You know, it happens every time. There's always at least one person, probably around five, who say like, Oh, this it blank isn't scary. Why are they on this list? Okay, scary is subjective, so shove it, okay? And I'll tell you where you can shove it. Because it's my list. Okay, you can't change the list after it's been posted, so deal with it. This little white rabbit is one of the scariest Bonnie versions in the series, and it's only higher on the list because it was in FNAF World. Like, if it was something like in FNAF 4, or like a main title in the series, it would have been scarier, especially putting it in a situation like maybe Withered Bonnie. But nevertheless, it still deserves the spotlight, because if it was in an actual game, holy crap. And it's 7, Yendo. Yendo might initially appear to just be an endoskeleton of Funtime Freddy, but it's entirely possible, and more likely, that he is an endoskeleton of another version 
version of Freddy that is not yet suited, as Yendo has a right hand where Funtime Freddy would instead typically have Bon Bon attached. Many believe that the name Yendo, which seems to be a combination of Endo and Yellow, alludes to him being the endoskeleton of a golden variation of Funtime Freddy, or just the original Golden Freddy endoskeleton that was removed prior to the first and second game, which doesn't really make sense timeline wise because why would they remove Golden Freddy's endo after the whole circus baby debacle, and then why would his endo be in the style of the fun times? So my best guess is that Yendo is intended to be a Golden Freddy version of Funtime Freddy, which lets him fit in perfectly on this list. His eyes are even yellow, so I think that this is pretty solid. And at 6, Easter Bonnie. Easter Bonnie, aside from being the best pun the, the series has ever released, is probably the kind of bunny your parents would make you sit with at the mall, but you'd be crying the whole time. Oh. Like Matt from In the Flesh, one of the other Fazbear Frights novels, okay, in Bunny Call. Yeah, which is totally meant to be a fanfic about MatPat. Like, was this his way of asking MatPat if he wanted to work on the next game? Like, are, they, are these Scott's deepest fantasies? It, it, it doesn't matter, okay? But this bunny is creepy. This version of Bonnie hails from FNAF AR Special Delivery and is basically like White Bonnie, but with glowing blue eyes, a glowing red mouth, yellow bow tie, and an egg pattern on his stomach. I, I can't really explain why I find this so unsettling. Perhaps because I constantly get chocolate bunnies around Easter and I don't want to think about eating an animatronic that's trying to kill me. But there's also a chocolate bonnie from what I can tell, um, but that one is meant to be eaten, so it doesn't scare me as much. I prefer like the Mr. Munchy ones that are like filled with kind of like Rice crispy kind of things. I, f I prefer those over the hollow ones. The hollow ones just make me feel empty inside, pun intended. Halfway through, into number five, Baby Long Legs. Baby Long Legs is a toy produced by Playtime Co. who debuted on a poster in Chapter 2, Flying a Web. Okay, I didn't actually notice this, although it was on the wiki and it absolutely terrified me. Not much is known about Baby Long Legs other than the fact that they come in the Mommy Long Legs and Family set with Mommy Long Legs and Daddy Long Legs, more on him later, where they were most likely created after the success of Mommy. Baby Long Legs appears in a poster after the player escapes from PJ Pugapillar. They are a stretchy yellow spider with a single tooth visible in the center of their face and a cyan strand of hair with matching cyan gloves and shoes with white frills. They also have orange eyes and wear a white diaper. But you know what, either way, even if it's supposed to be a baby, this thing is all kinds of terrifying. It's actually haunting, <laughs> honestly. It's... <sighs> And for Nightmare Bonnie. Nightmare Bonnie is absolutely freaking terrifying, okay? Like, have you seen those goddamn teeth? I don't know how that little kid was able to imagine this kind of thing when he was in a coma. Like, or, like, I don't, I still don't think that it was sound discs that were making him see it. Uh, either way, he was in a coma, but, like, holy ever-loving crap, this series has some messed up... I've never really been scared of Bonnie, alright? That, that's not something that I've had to deal with. But some of these are just unsettling. But nothing has really been like, oh crap, I'm not gonna sleep. But Nightmare Bonnie puts me on edge of that. I'm going to have a decent amount of nightmares. <laughs> so I guess the name checks out. I would have included Twisted Bonnie on this list, but there isn't any real official art of the character, and I don't want to screw over the editor who may even be me. Actually, it's not going to be me. And I don't want to end up screwing over the editor and having to cause them to use a load of fan art because we're trying to cut back on that on this channel because, you know, we never use fan art at all. Uh, <laughs> but, like, that's aside the point. Nightmare Bonnie has also been torn to pieces like any man after they see Ryan Reynolds, okay? Like, how are we supposed to measure up to that? Nightmare Bonnie is one of the real living embodiments of fear, and uh, you know what, these next few aren't gonna make it any easier on my sanity. Getting close to the end in number three, The Curse. The Curse is an Aztec-themed skin for the Springtrap animatronic and was released on March 5th in the Ancient Equinox event and is the fourth skin for Springtrap in total in FNAF AR. Curse is a teal-colored Springtrap dressed to look like an ancient Aztec warrior, and he has a large feathered crown and a golden chest piece. This guy looks like he's actually decaying, finally, which is certainly a better spin on things since decaying bodies aren't purple, even though the series seems to try to push that idea. Bruises are purple. Decay is commonly, at least in cartoons and this kind of media, depicted as green. A much like how Springtrap's suit in the curse form is a dark green. This could also be a subtle reference to the fact that Afton is a curse on these games, being unable to get rid of him in any meaningful way. Or maybe just about Glitch Trap. He's a curse on the series. 
series two. He needs to die permanently, please, for the love of God. But ultimately, in at number two, System Error Bonnie. System Error Bonnie, or System Error Toy Bonnie, depending on what you want to call it, is one of the goddamn creepiest animatronics in these freaking games. This animatronic is completely red and appears to be glitching, similarly to how Glitch Trap glitches in FNAF VR before you end up defeating him. Or defeating him. This thing is probably the creepiest form of Toy Bonnie ever, and it doesn't actually help that it looks menacing. The System Era version of Bonnie is more aggressive. It's angrier, or at least it seems that way, and I, I can't really explain how this is creepy, you just need to know. I, I saw it and I immediately knew that it had to be higher on the list, okay? I don't even know about it. I didn't even know about it until I was making a version of this list a long time ago, okay? Maybe I should play FNAF AR, although I don't really want to. <laughs> I don't have room for it. Finally, in a number one, Toxic Spring Trap. Okay, I didn't include normal spring chop on this list because officially, thanks to the man in room 1280 from Bunny Call, it is confirmed that William Afton was alive in the suit, thanks to the kid who possessed the body, who kept him alive uh, and kept him from dying because he wanted William to suffer, aka the one you should not have killed, aka a crying child. Everyone kept saying that, like, how would William be alive after 30 years? And you know what? I was right. So stop it. Stop telling me that I was wrong because I know that I'm right. Damn it. Ah. Anyway, Toxic Spring Trap from FNAF AR Special Delivery is just... Oh, I don't know, okay? He's a variation of the character instead of being the real Spring Trap, but he's still being shipped out to families. How? Why are you shipping out versions of your dead serial killer? It does not make sense. I don't know the lore behind it and I could be wrong, but it, it appears as if Toxic Spring Trap is a separate entity to Springtrap, but it does act more aggressively, whereas things like Flaming Springtrap act the exact same as normal one, which would have to be, uh, maybe they would be canon in that sense, thanks to FNAF 6 and then Burn Trap, like maybe this is like the in-between stage, I don't know. Okay, Toxic Springtrap has wart-like bubbles all over his skin that appear to be some form of poison that bubbles up to the surface, something like that. It's really gross, it's really nasty, it puts me on edge, but at least it's not as toxic as my ex.